All right. Thank you, Andrew. We are in Ephesians chapter 3. Uh, we are being encouraged in this wonderful book. Um, and I'm amazed as, as how it ties in so wonderfully with what we're doing in Bible study. Um, the book of Acts is tied, I think, directly to the book of Ephesians because the book of Ephesians is a book for the church. Um, you remember the sermon series title for the messages in Ephesians? Anybody remember that? Help them, Ellen. <laughs> Woo, mercy, we've started off on a sour note already. Um, well, this morning I want to talk to you about how many Baptists does it take to keep a secret? I still have not come up with what that number is, but uh, I want to talk to you about, about a mystery, about a secret uh, that God kept to himself for many, many centuries. Um, and, and, and so we find ourselves in Ephesians chapter 3. We're going to look at verses 1 through 13 quickly this morning, um, but I want to just read through verse 5 for us um, if, if we can. So. Can y'all stand one more? I just can't do this without doing that. Um, Jesus is not only the written word, he's the living word. And if he came walking in here, what would we do? We'd either stand in his honor or we'd fall at his feet. It's one of the two. So we want to honor God's word every time we're in it the best we can. All right, Ephesians 3. For this reason, I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus, for you Gentiles... If even you, look at your neighbor and say, you're a Gentile. <laughs> All right. I don't think we've got any Jewish folks in here. If we do, praise God. If indeed you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which was given to me for you, how that by revelation he made known to me the mystery, as I have briefly written already, by which when you read... By which when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men, as it has now been revealed by the Spirit to his holy apostles and prophets. Uh, Thomas Smith, ask God to bless the word this morning, would you? Yes. Amen. Please be seated. That's all right. That's the sermon. And, and I get that. And Next week we'll, we'll cover this verse. But Ephesians 3.20 says, Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works within us. And then verse 21, To him be glory in the church. That is the crux, I think, of, of this great book. That's the centerpiece uh, verse for this, um, for this fabulous book. And so I, we want to follow along those lines. Three times, three times in this passage, the great apostle Paul uses the word mystery. Now, we're not talking about something eerie or scary here. A Bible mystery is a truth that cannot be known unless God chooses to reveal it to you. Y'all with me there? Some have called it this a sacred secret, okay? And you do know this morning, brothers and sisters, that you know some things that this world knows nothing about. Y'all with me? You know some things that the world knows nothing about. And so I, I want to talk about this secret that God chose to reveal to us specifically to the Apostle Paul and a few others in the first century. Um, and and <laughs> the ama this amazing secret, this amazing mystery has influenced and affected people everywhere for the last 2,000 years. And by the way, it has had a big influence on you, this secret. And so first of all, I want to say that this secret this mystery that the scripture is talking about this morning influenced the ministry 
of the Apostle Paul. We just read those in verses 1 through 5. But this tremendous secret that God had revealed to Paul had led to him being in prison. He was a prisoner because of this secret. Um, And and he, he believed in God's vision of uniting Jews and Gentiles into this mystical, magical um, organization called the body of Christ, the church. You see, in those Old Testament apostles, uh, those Old Testament prophets and the people of God back in the day, they knew nothing about the church. But God chose to reveal the uniting of Jews and Gentiles into the body of Christ and used the apostle Paul greatly for that. But you know what? A lot of the Jews weren't happy about that because they felt like Paul was being prejudiced towards his own people. And and Paul was preaching this salvation message there in the temples and the synagogues. And one day a riot broke out in the temple and they arrested Paul and eventually uh, had him taken to Rome where he was tried as a traitor. And any time Paul wanted to compromise the message to the Gentiles of salvation, then the Jews would have set him free and exonerated him and let him go. But he would not. He was a prisoner because of this tremendous sacred secret, this this mystery. But Paul was also a minister because of this secret. Uh, He had the responsibility of sharing it with others. He had the responsibility of sharing this secret with others. Um, It was not enough to simply just share the good news uh, with the Gentiles. It was Paul's responsibility from the get-go to form them into a local church and teach them about their wonderful position in Christ. And because Paul had been faithful to the mystery, God had revealed to him salvation, that salvation had now been brought to Jews and Gentiles and God had been glorified. And so I'm so thankful for this tremendous secret that God has revealed to humanity. And because God revealed it, first of all, to the Apostle Paul, and he took the message of salvation to the Gentiles and the Jews and brought them together, forming this mystical, marvelous, magic thing called the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, you are a recipient of that secret today. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm in. And if you're not in, you're going you're gonna to get a, a, a chance and an opportunity to get in before you get out of here today. Oh, I like that. I, all right. Yeah, yeah, this is the 830 crowd. All right. Um, this, I don't know what it is, but the 1030 crowd, I guess, has had more coffee than us. Because they're a little bit more animated. Oh, you know. Anyways. This secret also influenced the message to the Gentiles. Look at verse 6. That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs. Say amen. Amen. Of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ through the gospel. Of which I became a minister according to the gift of of God. uh, That he's given to me by the effective working. Now this is key. Effective working of his power to me who am less than the least of all the saints, this grace was given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Man, I wished I, wished, I, wished I had a deeper vocabulary and a, and, a, and a greater knowledge to be able to just unpack what you have just heard from the Word of God. Amazing stuff here. This secret not only influenced Uh, the ministry of the Apostle Paul. This secret has influenced the message to the Gentiles. Now, last week we looked at at chapter 2 and verses 11 through 22, and we learned that uh, Christ's work on the cross not only made it possible for people to be reconciled to God, it made it possible for us to be reconciled to one another. We've got a new relationship. Some of y'all look mad about that. We've got a new relationship. Because of this mystery, this sacred secret in Christ. We've been reconciled to God and and we've been reconciled to one another. And so uh, the Gentiles were now fellow heirs 
with God through Jesus Christ. And they possessed all the spiritual riches. That's what Paul's been talking about there. All the spiritual blessings were now theirs. They were also with the Jews. Um, and so it's now possible for them to be a part of God's family. And they're partakers. Do you understand how many promises are ours in Christ Jesus? Man, we are partakers of a tremendous inheritance for those of us that are, there's old Larry Vaden, fresh off of surgery. Look at him. Doesn't he look good? The spiritual blessings that are available to us in Christ Jesus. God provides healing for his people. Amen. Come on, Larry. Amen. All right. And God provides all the things that we need for us when we need them. I don't tell you what, when I look across the room, there is nothing like the family of God. Nothing like the family. Oh, mercy me. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by His blood. Join us as we travel this side. For I'm part of the family, the family of God. Give him praise in the house today. Amen. And so we have a new relationship, but we also have new power. Uh, man, I, the message to the Gentiles does so much for us this morning. I think we tend to forget it sometimes. Uh, but the Gentiles not now not only had a new relationship with God and one another, they had new power, a power to live the Christian life, to live for God's glory. And this, this, this power was illustrated. Paul's an example of God's power. I mean, this, this cat lived above his circumstances and situations, did he not? Um, and, and, and so God had saved Paul by his grace and given him this ministry to the Gentiles. And... Uh, and God gave Paul the power to accomplish what he wanted to do. And do you think God had, had a great reward for the Apostle Paul? You can't beat the Lord. Whatever he calls you to do, he's going to give you the power and the resources to do. D d look at this. this is, look at verse 7. You see, the, uh, he says, I became a minister according to the gift of grace of God given to me. By the effective working. That's our word for energy. Yeah, I love that commercial. I can never, whenever I hear that word energy, I think about that energizer bunny, you know. We, God is working in us. He has given us the energy and, and the work for the working of his power. And that, my friends, is the word we get for dynamite. That's power. Uh, and Brother Cal, you just don't know what all I've got to deal with. You don't know what I've got to do. You, you don't know who I live with. You don't know who I work for. You don't know. Uh, you know what? There's a Greek word for all that. Baloney. God has given us everything we need to accomplish his plan for our life. We have his power. You've got resurrection power. I don't care what's happened in your life. I care. I do care. Y'all y'all that know me best know I do not have the gift of mercy. Uh, but I can be merciful, all right? Um, but God is working in you and supplying you with his power to live for his honor and his praise and glory. Somebody shout amen. So we've got a new relationship, we've got new power, and we also have new riches. How many of you like the good stuff? Yeah. And the stuff, y'all, is not wrong. Unless stuff has you. It's not wrong to have stuff. But I want to tell you what, the stuff, the riches that Christ gives, far better than what the world gives. And that's what Paul's been talking about here in verse 2. Look at verse 8. To me who am less than the least of all the saints, this grace was given that I should preach among the Gentiles. Do you see that word? The unsearchable riches of Christ. That word unsearchable means unfathomable. In other words, 
You can't get to the bottom of Christ's riches. You just keep on digging and you can't get to the bottom of them. You can't outgive Jesus. I mean, I've got exhibit A's all over the building, and I could pick out anybody in here for an example. But I look over here at old John Coconut uh, and his beautiful bride. You know, just a few short months ago, neither one of them had a job. And now look at John. He's over there in his suit and tie. Doesn't he look good? And, and you know what this brother, he, 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 he's got a great job now. And guess who, the undesign, who has the undesignated title of the chaplain at the jail is? Right there. They're coming to John, sheriff's department, all over the place. And they're asking, what is it that you've got? They're wanting some of it. Do you understand how rich we are in Christ Jesus? Man, the blessings that are ours. And then I could go on and on about his his beautiful... Oh, this isn't one of them. But Kenda asked me, she said, I noticed that you have a lot of handkerchiefs. And I said, yeah, I like to sweat, so I I use a handkerchief. And uh, you know what she did? She put our second mile logo on some handkerchiefs and gave it to me. And every time I pull a handkerchief out of the drawer, and there's that second, I think about Kenda and the riches of Christ Jesus. You cannot beat serving Jesus. There's nothing like the family of God. Nothing like the family of God. And if you don't know the riches that Christ has for you, let me sit down and have a powwow with you in the kitchen after the service, okay? Um, my. And, and the Bible, I, I believe there in verse 10, he's talking there about angels, partially. Even the angels watch the outworking of God's salvation and are amazed at the wisdom of God. And they're speechless as they see the church of the Lord Jesus Christ accomplishing God's will. And then verses 10 through 13, let me read those. And there's one final truth here I want to cover. Um, Verse 10, to the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known to the church in the be made to the church to the principalities and powers in the heavenly places according to the eternal purpose which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord in whom we have boldness. Look at your neighbor and say boldness. With confidence through faith in him. Therefore I ask that you do not lose heart at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. Remember I told you he was a prisoner because of this mystery? Paul said, don't feel sorry for me. (laughs) He said, it's for your good. So uh, this secret, here's the last, last truth I want to give. This secret, this mystery influenced not only the ministry of Apostle Paul and the message to the Gentiles, but it influenced the mission of the church. Y'all do know that the church has a mission, right? We're to reach people for Christ and teach people to follow Christ. That's our mission. Why so? Because that's what Jesus gave to us in the Great Commission over there. That was his last word. So the church was influenced greatly. The mission of the church was influenced greatly by this secret. Now, the Old Testament gives us three over 333 prophecies about the coming of the Messiah. Did Jesus come the first time? And every one of those prophecies were fulfilled in him. But there's not one prophecy in the Old Testament concerning the church. Not one. The church was a mystery, a secret hidden by God until he chose to reveal it, how God would bring Jews and Gentiles together into one body called the church. Why did he keep it a secret for so many centuries? Well, I've asked myself that question all week long, and here's what I've come up with. What if Satan had known about all the implications of the cross and the empty tomb and how that when Jews and Gentiles would one day 
surrender their heart and lives to this resurrected Christ and be united in one body, seated in heavenly places, given spiritual blessing after spiritual blessing, living victorious lives, defeating sin, Satan, and self. Do you think Satan might have changed his strategy a little bit? Yes, God kept that hidden. Listen, Satan's powerful, but he's not omnipotent. Satan is, he's pretty slick. He's got a lot of knowledge, but he's not omniscient. And so God hid that from him for centuries because God wanted to get this plan, the church, into place. And when the time was right, boom, the church was injected into human history. There's nothing like the church of the, we're the bride of Christ. I could preach all morning. What great stuff out of this great book. But now he wants this. Now this is, this is, this is, if you missed everything else, listen to the last bit of this. He wants this secret, this mystery, not only to be known by the church, but we're now stewards, managers of this great secret. In other words, he wants us to share this secret. He wants us to share about this mystery. And we, like Paul, are to commit these truths to faithful men, 2 Timothy 2.2, guard them and share them. We're to teach and preach the mystery of the faith, handing it down to the next generation. That's why, I don't know who said it, but someone has said, full of wisdom, said we are only one generation away from being a lost nation. We're right there, aren't we? We have got to reach this next generation. I'm all about this color of hair. I'm all about the older folks. But bless God, we've got to reach the younger generation. We have to. It's our commandment. It's our commission. Now, we don't forget about the older folks. Bless God, y'all pay the bills. Thank you. But we have got to do whatever we got out of Kenwood. Every time I go out there, my heart just begins to burn hot for that community. 40,000 people live within three miles of that church, three and a half miles of that church. 40,000 folks. And 90% of them don't have a clue about who Jesus is and who he wants to be in their life. Wrap your heart around that. The next generation. We've got to reach them. We've got to reach them. Somebody say amen. amen. We have got to reach these folks. I'm so thankful for our children's ministry and our youth and, and middle school ministry and the teachers and the workers that we've got with those folks. I'd put you guys up against anybody. Uh, Scott Denny, I'd charge hell with a water pistol if I knew you were right there with me. I mean, what a wonderful group of and we got, but we got to stay the course. We've got to. So, this great truth concerning the church is a part of God's eternal purpose in Christ. Isn't that what he says there in verse 11? And when you understand this truth, it'll give you great confidence and great boldness in the faith. And all of God's divine resources are available this morning to those who sincerely want to do His will and to those who want to help Him accomplish His will on the earth. God had a secret, but He does not want that secret to be a secret anymore. This is one secret, Second Mile Church, we cannot keep to ourselves. Pray with me. Father, we come to you with jubilant hearts today because of who you are and who we are in you. We're filled with joy. But our hearts are heavy too because It's still a mystery to a lot of folks that Jesus loves us and died for us 
and rose again for us. And one day is coming for us. Oh God, burden our hearts for what burden yours. Help us, Lord, in this tremendous mission that the church has. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.